if we can focus on these five superheroes or these five major players in the metabolism, we can elevate the health of the metabolism. So that's kind of how this program, it's 28 days started. Then I said, okay, if we're going to do that, we're going to need to figure out a nutrition way, a way with nutrition to support those, but go between rest and restoration. I am Haley Palmer. I'm your nutritionist. I did not come by this profession by choice. I would like to say I was drug out of a barn, kicking and screaming into a hospital bed and uh, found myself in health crisis and was actually diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder at 19. It's called ITP. It's been really in the news lately with all of these clotting issues that a lot of people are dealing with in their health and their immune system. At a very early age, I got to, um, I got the privilege of being voluntold that I was going to study the metabolism because the metabolism was at the crux of why my body was attacking itself, why my immune system was attacking its own platelets, why I had chronic inflammation, why I had premature graying, why I had hair loss, why I had weight gain, why I was extremely wired and tired. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that feeling where you know you're exhausted, you know you're tired, you know you need rest, but at the same time, there's kind of this internal um, angst that's going on in the body when the immune system is in flare or when you're having reactivity or when your adrenals are out of balance. And so as I got drug um, out of the barn and into the hospital, and I laid there and I was taking, you know, prednisone and uh, anti-rejection drugs for the autoimmune disorder. I had systemic eczema. I um, had rashing all over my skin. I had a lot of scarring and scar tissue, which I've been able to resolve through food. And uh, that's why I like to do our homemade face care uh, programs together. But as I was going through that problem process, I had to really try to study and understand and lean in and be gentle and be kind and be loving to my body in order to figure out how the heck I was going to not just sustain organ function in life, but how I was going to thrive as opposed to um, survive. So as many of you know, I was well on my way to going to vet school. I have a degree in animal sciences, agriculture sciences, soil sciences, and uh, was not planning on doing this whole nutrition thing for people. But lucky me, through my own health crisis, I realized that there had to be a better way and a different way and really started to study the biomechanics uh, of the metabolism, the biochemistry of the metabolism. And I learned a lot about the human body. And I started to go, oh my gosh, wait a minute. This is a lot of the stuff that we're talking about in agriculture sciences. So one thing that I think is really bizarre to me is that our, the human species is the only species that we think of diet as a bad word, right? You're on a diet, you have diet food, you have diet products, you're drinking diet soda, ah, that's awful. But in every other species, the diet is something that's designed that that all these people and scientists and you know nutritionists and biochemists come together to design a diet for your dog that will make their joints more uh, nimble, that will make them not be in pain, that will increase longevity, that will enhance their digestion, that will regulate their weight, right? We have zoologists, biologists, biochemists, nutritionists that create diets for animals that are in captivity. Like I worked on a project with the black rhinos at the Denver Zoo. I worked with the chimpanzee program um, with a zoo in Nebraska. I worked with a division of wildlife with a diet to create a diet uh, for um, in the division of wildlife for deer and elk population that were in captivity while they were doing some research on wasting disease. So I just had this like disconnect where I said, how can diet be such a powerful and impactful and loving and kind and, you know, it have major expectation in every other species, but in the human species. So I set out to set the diet world on its head. As I was studying metabolism, I was saying, wait a minute, 
if we can alter the structure and the physiology of the animals that we use for production in meat, the marbling, the quality, the grade of the meat, if we can change the what we call feed to gain ratio, meaning how we feed them determines whether they gain weight, where they gain weight, how they gain weight, is it muscle, is it fat? If we can do that in the animal industry, why can't we do that in the human industry? And why can't I use diet to change my life and my health and drag me out of the hospital bed, bed and back into the barn and into life? And that's how I kind of got started in this whole thing. Then I created a bunch of clinics and um, awesome, fun, lovely, love, love my clinical practice. But we were in a situation where, you know, I was flying all over the place. People were flying in, people were flying me out and our clinics were at full capacity. And actually one of my clients insisted that I write a book. Many of you know that I'm dyslexic. So for me, books go like this. Since I was a little kid, we would have, I don't know if you guys remember, you would have book fairs. I would stack my books, you know, as high as I could stack them at the book fair and beg my mom to buy me every book that I could not read um, because I felt like it would make me seem well-read. It would make me feel smart. And I had books and books and books in my bedroom that I didn't have the um, capacity to read. But it made me feel, by surrounding myself with those books, it made me feel smarter for some reason. I was so fortunate that my mom worked next to a library that had books on tape. And so what I would do is I would go while she was at work and I would sit at the library, La Havre Public Library. I love you, by the way. I would sit there and I would listen and I would just be, I was an ear reader. I would just consume book after book after book. And I was always interested in, in anatomy books and physiology books and veterinary science books and how I was loved gardening and um, I loved, you know, bio eco cultures like, you know, what ladybugs do and how the worms enrich the soil and all those kinds of things were always so fascinated, fascinating to me. But when my client said I should write a book, I just thought that was kind of crazy because even when I sat for my graduate level testing for my GRE, I was like third grade, second month, still third grade, second month. And I thought, if you can't read a book, how are you supposed to write a book? So I decided to put this program together to create the fast metabolism diet for a larger community. And I audioed the entire book. I was so blessed and fortunate to work with a publisher that was willing to think out of the box or out of the book. Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they love the hardcover books and they like the paper to pen. And when I proposed the book and I said, the issue is, is that I'm going to have to auto everything, audio everything and have somebody transcribe it. Um, that was going to be kind of a whole nother venture. So fortunately, I had an amazing publisher that supported that. And as you guys all know, the history of it, we are we were an instant number one New York Times bestselling book. We're in over 35 different languages. We've sold millions of copies. Um, it was well accepted. And it was so funny. Someone said to me, I feel like you were talking to me. And I said, I actually was. Because again, everything was audio recorded. So I want to take a little bit of a giant scissor step backwards and talk about what realization, and I remember it distinctively, um, that I had that it's about the metabolism. And again, I was a very young. I was struggling significantly with my health. Um, I was depressed. I was not well. Um, and really, a lot of the future did not look very positive. And I felt like no matter what I did, I wasn't getting um, the results from my body. So someone would say, like, for example, um, you know, take a certain vitamin, take a certain herb, take a certain drug, uh, eat a certain way. And I would watch these other people have these like miraculous, amazing results. And it just was as if I was pouring water through a, a colander, like what you would rinse your noodles in, right? I felt like I was pouring, you know, buckets and buckets of wellness and water into this porous uh, environment and everything was just kind of draining through me and not manifesting the health that I wanted. So I went and I started studying biochem and the, specifically the biochemistry, the metabolism. So I want to start with talking about when I, because I'm going to use the word metabolism a lot, and I want to talk about what the metabolism is. It's really popular now. 
when he, when I first started talking about the metabolism, um, I, even on a lot of the talk shows and TV shows and stuff that I was doing, I mean, I was met with like aggro aggression about, you know, when I'm like, calories are a lie and don't drink diet soda. And I mean, people were mad at me. And I said, that's okay. That's okay. We will we'll evolve together through the process of wellness. And I'm, I'm so happy to see this. But if you go into your book, if you guys don't have a book yet, make sure you grab one. Um, we have an amazing individual that donates a lot of books to our community. And um, they still, they're in the medical health and wellness world. They feel very compelled that this book is changing lives. And so if you don't have a book, make sure you go to our website um, and type in free book. Usually we're giving some away. So please take advantage of that. But we talk about the metabolism as being something, but it's actually a process, okay? So it's a process that happens in the body. It's not an object. So like specifically the me metabolism, the metabolic processes, and there's thousands, millions, billions. We just got some new research on how many billions of things happen in your cell every day. Um, but it's a metabolic process that consists of chemical reactions, right? That occur in the cells of all living organisms to sustain, to sustain life. It's the change or transformation of food into either heat and fuel or substance. So again, I just want to jot a couple things down and make sure if we don't grasp anything else, we talk about what's the metabolism. Just know that it's a process. And I tell you that because I want you to be very kind and very gentle with your body. So sometimes you might not lose weight right away because your body is busy healing other metabolic processes that are out of balance, that have gotten out of balance because of chemicals, pollutions, um, chronic dieting, stress, medications, drugs, the wrong supplements, whatever it is, your body is in the repair process and it can't yet burn food, fuel, fat for fuel. So remember, it's a process. It's not an object. So you can't say, a boom, tomorrow, I want the best metabolism in the world. You can lean into your body and say, what is the current status of my metabolism telling me about my environment and what I need to do to change my environment by what I expose myself to here, here, here on your skin, in your diet, in your mouth, through your eyes, all of those kinds of things. Um, so the first and foremost job of the metabolism is to sustain life. So if you are struggling, if you have an autoimmune disorder, if you have high cholesterol, if your scale is going up, 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 please give yourself a big warm hug and tell your body, thank you so much for sustaining my life. A dysfunctional metabolism just means that this is the very best way at this given moment that your body can sustain life first and foremost. So if you feel like you have a slow metabolism, if you feel like you have a sluggish metabolism, you do all have a metabolism or we wouldn't have life. But if you're not really thrilled with your metabolism, be kind, be gentle, be systematic in your approach to heal it. But of all, but all above all else, be grateful that it's still sustaining life, even if it feels like a dysfunctional life, okay? And then remember that it is designed to create a change to transform food and stored fat into either fuel or substance. So fuel is going to be energy, right? So remember how earlier I talked about feeling tired and wired. My body was not efficient in having that. There's, there's different adrenal hormones. There's epinephrine, norepinephrine, corticotrophic hormones. There's aldosterone, which makes you feel strong, smart, clear-headed. My body was leaning on some of the crisis fight and flight hormones in order to sustain life. I was really efficient at the metabolic pathway of being reactive, depressive, anxiety riddled. I was really, really good at it. And I'm so proud of my body for sustaining life in that state of dysfunction long enough for me to hack or crack some of the codes of having a more balanced and heal, uh, heal my metabolism. The other thing is that it is the metabolism, the process of the metabolism is designed to create substance. So substance is muscle, fat, bone, 
or blood, right? So over here, I'm going to put muscle. We love muscle. Yay! Not just for its looks, not just for its beauty, but we love muscle for all that it does for our body. Fat. We love fat. Remember, when we're burning fat efficiently and not storing it, it is what makes all of our sex hormones. We actually manufacture our sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, everything that regulates your blood sugar, your blood pressure, um, your whether you have allergies or not during allergy season, your vitamin D levels, sustained vitamin D levels for immune system. All of that happens when you metabolize fat efficiently. It uh, does blood and bone also. So blood. Remember that your blood is the delivery system. It's the UPS, FedEx, USPS, uh, snail mail, email, um, DMs, IMs, any way that you communicate. Your blood is the vessel that communicates all of your nutrients to the place where healing can occur. And the next one is your bone. So... A lot of people talk about menopause, bone density, um, osteoporosis, osteopenia. Really important, how structure it, what holds us up. But what a lot of people don't necessarily think about is that our bone is one of our most adaptogenic, meaning our ability to adapt. We always think of the adrenals, our most adaptogenic resources in our entire body. It's where we store minerals. It's, which remember, help create a nice, calm, you know, sleep, deep sleep, nice mood, no depression, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, um, always seeing the positive side of things. So our bone and the metabolism is really important. It, it helps with regulating the pH. It helps um, uh, support the adrenal hormones, our stress hormones, whether we produce stress hormones, what, how we produce stress hormones. So that structure is all really important. Again, remember the metabolism is the process. It takes something, food, fat, stored nutrients, can also take muscle, unfortunately, can also take organ tissue, unfortunately, when we don't feed ourselves. We do feed ourselves. We eat our structure when we don't consume healthy things. Always remember that. I'm going to say that again. We will eat. Our metabolism is designed to sustain life. If we don't if we create healthy things that we put in, we have a better chance of creating a healthy life. If we don't eat, our body will consume our structure in the form of muscle. Smooth muscle is the heart, the bicep, in the form of bone, in the form of blood, and lastly, unfortunately, in the form of fat. So we want a healthy metabolism that goes and converts food for fuel, fat for fuel, and we have a nice sustained energy. So... All of you right now, I want you to just take two seconds out of your life and thank your body for having a metabolism. And as we go through how we maximize or heal or support or stimulate the metabolism, I want you to make sure that you have a really clear ideal or vision for what you want your metabolism to be like. Okay? So when... I was in clinical practice, as I'd been in clinical practice for 20 plus years, a lot of people would come in and say, you know, I want to lose weight or I've got a, li a big one. I've got a life insurance policy and they won't approve me because my cholesterol's high. Um, my cholesterol medication's making me feel, you know, shaky or fatigued. I want to stabilize my diabetes. I want to get pregnant. We had a nice um, list of goals and on, on the website, you can go and there's a health wish list. It's, I really encourage you to immediately fill that out if you have not filled that out and to um, dream a big. But as we start to look at, okay, you know, uh, we also have a um, self-assessment questionnaire, which is gives us a good definition of where you're at so that we know where you're at and where you want to go to. So the self-assessment questionnaire, you know, there are some things that you might not think about, like maybe your eyebrows are thinning or you have cracked heels or you feel like your skin is crepey. Those assessments, those all tell us things about your metabolism and are all things that we want to look at and monitor together so that we can work on healing the metabolism and making sure that it's manifesting in all aspects of the structure, energy, muscle, fat, blood, bone. 
all of those things as we work and heal at, on the process. So I had to put together, I decided to put together a four-week program where we could focus on actually healing the metabolism. So one thing in the, the principles of the fast metabolism diet, we talk a lot about confuse it to lose it. What we want to do is change the trajectory of your current metabolic destiny. Again, like I said, if you're struggling, hug yourself because you're sustaining life in that state of dysfunction. But in order to get out of that state of dysfunction, we have to change things up. What's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same result. And as I shared with you, when I was going through this, I felt like I was doing a lot of good things to try to get my health under control. You know, I was never the person to go through fast food places. Quite frankly, my body just couldn't tolerate it. When I was younger, when I was in college, I was making my own food, but I was still on a ton of prednisone, had eczema, you know, my platelets were low. I just, just didn't feel like I could get traction in being well. I felt like I was, uh, doing a decent job at being a fairly healthy, unhealthy person. I don't know how else to explain that. I used to always say, I learned about the Lennon law in the car, in the car industry. And I used to always say, where can you turn your body in uh, from the Lennon law? I just felt like it was, you know, I just couldn't get, like I said, traction. So I started to create a program where I said, okay, what if we support intensely certain areas, what I like to call the five major players of the metabolism, certain areas of the body through nutrients, micronutrients, targeted micronutrients, foods, um, what we call success boosters, natural therapies. What if I just took bite sizes at this, gini this ginormous uh, thing that felt like an out of control health? So I identified, I identified kind of what I call the five major players of the metabolism. So let's kind of isolate those here really quick. So, oops, I talked about a few of them a second ago. But let's talk about the liver, the adrenals, the thyroid, the pituitary. And you guys, in your book, this is on page 33. And then I'm going to call your substance. And remember, we talked about that a second ago. So if you have a lot of muscle mass and good bone density, it's going to be easier to usually trigger a change in your metabolism. If you have already, your body feels like it has enough metabolic energy to have you know, thick hair, um, nice eyebrows, healthy skin, those are some of the first things that the body retracts from producing when it's under crisis. And we see that in our animal world when uh, oftentimes when a dog goes into heat, they'll blow what they call blow their coat. They'll lose their uh, energy capacity to maintain a nice coat. We see that in uh, horses, their hoof, their coat will be poor when their nutrition or if they get a fever or they're not healthy. We see that a lot around us where if a tree is under distress, it will lose all of its leaves. So oftentimes when we're under distress, again, in order to maintain life, we'll lose our bloom, okay? We'll lose our uh, shininess. Maybe that's through our thoughts. You know, maybe we lose our shiny thoughts, but maybe we also, like, I had a ton. I'm going to show you guys some pictures. I had a ton, a tremendous amount of especially crown um, hair loss. It was not fun not fun at all. So we talk about when I, when I decided to develop this program, I said, okay, what are the, the areas that we can really focus on and we can target those? And maybe if we hit those five major players and just flood them with nutrients, maybe those can help pull up the other billion metabolic processes that happen in the body and we can level the playing field and we can elevate our health. So I first identified that and I started researching foods and herbs and tonics and um, spices and food combinations that would nurture all of these. So the, I always say the thyroid's the, the metabolism superhero. There are receptor sites on every cell of the body that the thyroid binds with that creates an excitation or an exchange of energy. And so the thyroid is a powerful one that we talk a lot about in the book. 
Um, we also can see with things like keto diets or fasting or excessive dieting or diet-based products, artificial sweeteners, how it can alter the bond angles in the thyroid hormone that actually give you a slower metabolism in the long run. We talk a lot about reverse T3 and the thyroid hormone. It's one that is kind of a scientific proving, like an aha, we see this in the actual microscope and, and in our blood labs. We actually see that stress and uh, artificial sweeteners and excessive fasting and uh, metabolic extremes like ketosis, ex ex uh, extended ketosis, we actually see that it alters the shape of one of our superhero hormones and then truly slows the metabolism in the long run. Remember, the pituitary is kind of the conductor of the whole thing. It tells the body, you know, how and when to be active. The substance, again, we're talking about fat, but we're also talking about brown fat, fat that is thermogenic. We're talking about um, bone, blood, hair, skin, nails, all of that substance. If we can focus on these five superheroes or these five um, major players in the metabolism, we can elevate the health of the metabolism. So that's kind of how this program, it's 28 days, started. Then I said, okay, if we're going to do that, we're going to need to figure out a nutrition way, a way with nutrition to support those, but go between rest and restoration. So anytime something needs healing, let's talk about a broken bone, for example. There is a period of rest so that the body can rebuild and remodel. And there is a period of, of restoration where maybe you're doing physical therapy or coming back into activity. If you're running a marathon and you break your leg, you stop running the marathon, you allow the bone to heal, and then you rehabilitate typically before you go back into running a marathon. And so when I started looking at supporting these areas, I thought, gosh, if I just, you know, really blast liver support and adrenal support and pituitary support, support and thyroid support and substance support, that's a lot for a body that's already struggling. So again, I took this massive thing and I took bite sizes and I said, okay, let's go for four weeks and let's go week by week and let's cycle or rotate our rest and restoration. So in the fast metabolism diet, each week you focus on three targeted areas. So we call it phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one and phase two and phase three happen all within a week. So phase one is the first two days of the week. Phase two is the second two days. And phase three, three is the last three days of the week. So for example, phase one would be Monday, Tuesday. Phase two would be Wednesday, Thursday. And phase three would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And in each of those phases, there is a very specific food list. There is a very specific style of eating. There are do's and don'ts. And the goal there is to take a minute of your time and really offer power on your plate and say, hey, can I sneak in here and help out a little bit? And maybe through cycling that, hey, how about if I help with this? How about if I come over and do your dishes? What about next week if I maybe do laundry? Maybe what if next week I come and sweep your patio? By sneaking into an exhausted or not well-balanced or not healthy or not optimal, like, you know, I've got Olympic athletes that want more and more and more out of their bodies or moms that need more and more and more to give to their families or dads that are there in the same position or um, teachers or children that need more and more and more to give to their communities. And so if I can sneak in and we can sneak in by putting power on the plate and we can rotate through that, this is why we don't do one thing all week long. And we don't even as a community do one program all year long. We are constantly coming in and serving the body in different and unique ways to create an environment that the body does what it's de defined, designed to do, which is come into homeostasis so that you can maintain your metabolism and you can maintain life. So we start with the fast metabolism diet and I say, give me 28 days, give me four weeks. And in each of those four weeks, we elevate 
what we're feeding our bodies, we get maybe more and more savvy. You know, we have people that follow along. We have challenges in our community. We have people that follow along, you know, five, six challenges and never actually make any of the food just to grasp the ideas and the concepts and change their paradigm around food and fall in love with food and think about some of the basic rules that we have, which is eating five meals a day, three meals, eating five times a day, three meals and two snacks, uh, making sure you eat within 30 minutes of waking, things like drinking half your body weight in ounces of spring water every day because solution, dilution is a solution for pollution. And as we're starting to burn fat more efficiently, we're releasing fat soluble toxins. We want to flush them on out of our body, okay? Some of those basic rules that we can kind of start to grasp that are important to nurture and heal the metabolism. And then they jump out and they say, okay, I'm ready to give you the 28 days. But remember, nutrition is a lifelong process. Not just because you need constant coaching and nurturing and feeding, but because the metabolism sustains life. So as long as you're planning on sustaining life, you're going to be working on your metabolism. As long as you are planning on eating, breathing, drinking, sleeping, you're going to be working on your metabolism. And it's kind of like, you know, we don't brush our teeth once. We don't go to the gym once and consider ourselves fit. We don't, um, you know, make our bed once and consider our home tidy. We, it is a process and we, I want to talk about, okay, so what do you do? So you're sitting here going, okay, I am doing the fast metabolism diet. I went to the fast metabolism diet. I'm ready to incorporate the fast metabolism diet. So how do I get the support that I need? So let me talk you through a couple of tools. I'm a big advocate for having the actual book. Um, a lot of people have it on audio. I'm an audio person, as I shared with you. However, this is a workbook. This is not concepts. This is not theories. These are things that you're going to actually practical have practical uh, application in your life. Besides some of our, we have hundreds and hundreds of recipes on our website, but some of our most favorite recipes like the chili and the coconut curry chicken and the lentil stew and the avocado turkey lettuce wrap. Some of our favorite recipes are in the book also. So make sure you grab a book. If you don't have a book, you can get them on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, our website. We have amazing donors in the health and medical and science world that believe so much in this program that they donate books every month to our community. So if you need a book, um, you can apply for one for free. The other is make sure that you have downloaded the app. We have an app, The Fast Metabolism Diet by Haley Pomeroy. It is free. If you do nothing but track your water, if you do nothing but log uh, your food, if you do nothing but use the grocery list, export your meal maps, um, use it for um, reminders and things uh, and little tips on how to nurture your metabolism. Use that app on your phone. That technology is really, really supportive. We also have a different uh, style in our community. When I went from, I would say I went from barn to hospital, hospital back to barn, um, back to school, into clinic, and then into the book world. And one thing that when we started selling so many copies of the book that I was grieving was um, being able to help people that had what ifs and yeah buts in their life, like all of us. What if I'm nursing? What if I'm running a mud runner? What if um, I don't have a gallbladder? What if um, I want to get pregnant? What if I've stopped my periods? And so we have created two different kinds of support. We have a membership community where you can get your questions answered. My team is on there 24 seven. And then they meet with me once a week on questions that we maybe didn't have answers to, or they didn't have answers to. Sometimes we'll shoot a video. Sometimes we'll create a blog post. Sometimes I get on there and answer. I get on there and answer a lot. Um, and then we have another really fun level of support, which is challenges. We do those every month. They start at different times. You can jump in at any point. And um, those we call uh, events, challenges and events. And sometimes we even do live events, which is really great. We've done a cruise. Our uh, our community is getting ready in the following year. We'll be cruising again together is the plan. We sometimes do live events. 
Um, we do Facebook Facebook events. We do podcasts, all kinds of events where you can get solutions and answers. So this is my challenge for each and every one of you. I'd like you to embrace your current metabolic status. I'd like you to really dream big and create a wish list for where you want to be in your health and wellness. And then I want you to join us in our next challenge. I want you to join us in our membership community, get the support, get your questions answered. But above, above all else, really truly believe that you can put power on your plate and you can completely change the trajectory of your life. I still have a barn full of critters, but a clinic and a community full of individuals that have really filled my life and my life's purpose. So jump in, join us in the fast metabolism journey. You will fall in love with food. This is not a diet for first time dieters. It's a diet for last time dieters. I hope you guys enjoyed the class today. You love to.